Alison Holloway for a totally different look at the hidden world of blood, flesh, and glory. The crowds are gone. The main event is over. Mike Tyson's gone home with Frank Bruno's championship belt. When it comes to boxing dreams, well, you can't get much bigger than this. A multi-million dollar title fight seen on Showtime, seen around the world, but out there, the fights go on. Other boxers, other dreams. Now, they might not make it here, but they are just as impassioned. This hour is about them. A different look into the corners of a world we never get to see. The sensation they call Butterbean, a former factory worker, a truly big man who represents the little guy. I'm one to prove other people wrong. You know, people say, you can't do it, so I'm gonna prove them wrong that I can do it. of opponent on up against. He trains on a street called Hope with dreams of Olympic gold. I love the sport, I love it. And, and once you get used to it, you, you can't stop doing it. You, all the time, you always think about boxing. Think about boxing. I'm in school, I'm always moving my head, reading my book. I just imagine that somebody throwing punches at me, you know, I'm dodging, throwing punches. trying his luck in a wild, bloody free-for-all to find the toughest man in Alaska. I kind of felt bad I knocked that guy out of the ring yesterday. I was trying to catch him as he went out. Each fighter, each dream, will stand or fall tonight in different rings in different cities across the country. We begin in a small city on the shore of a great lake. A tiny gym for an immense fighter. Why Butterbean? Well, I went on a Butterbean diet to lose 20 pounds so I could enter the tough man because they had a 400 pound weight limit and people at work was kind of, hey Butterbean. And they, they were more or less joking in the beginning. It was more or less a big joke because I'd eat them a lot. It, it, it really, it's a good nickname. I don't mind it at all. Hey, man. Yeah, you're, you're here. The man they call Butterbean is training here for a fight that could make or break his boxing dream. Come on. There you go. Kill that a few years ago, he was Eric Esch, making mobile homes in Jasper, Alabama. But then, he entered a tough man competition, where men off the street fight each other for money. It's kind of a fluke that it ever even happened. The people kept begging me, come on, get in it, get in it. It was like a $50 entry fee, and I said, no, that's, you know, a day's work. I mean, so, they said, well, we'll pay your entry fee. A bunch of them got in, pitched in, paid the entry fee. 
Do you remember the first time you got into a ring and, and what it felt like? I was really I was really nervous because the guy I was fighting, his name was Baby Huey, and he wrestled bears for a living. I'd never fought before, never had gloves on, never practiced or trained. And me and him just went at it and at it and at it. You know, it was, it was great, you know. And then once after the first round was over, I said, I can take this guy. I mean, you hit somebody and they go down and they don't move. And it's it's great. It really is great. It's a big, it's a, it's a rush. A lot of pressure-filled situations. Oh, we got a left there. He knocked it down. Big left. A big left by the Butterbean. And he floors the well. Butterbean became a favorite on the tough man circuit even after he lost the championship. A year and a half ago, Butterbean turned professional. He fights as a heavyweight and he draws big crowds. Some other pro fighters resent him, but the fans love him. He's like a big Rocky, an average Joe who's actually doing it, going out and chasing his dream. Well, I'm a good fighter, but I'm not a good boxer. You know, I can get out there and I can bang with anybody. I use my weight to my advantage. I ain't many 300-pound fighters out there. What he lacks in style, he makes up for in heart. What's your dream? My dream in life is to be heavyweight champion of the world. My dream. It's a good one. I would, I would love to fight Tyson. That, that would really be a, a dream come true. I got as much power as any fighter out there. And I just got to get him on the inside, and Tyson likes to fight on the inside, so that'd be a good fight. Wouldn't be a good boxing match, but it'd be a good fight. But on this day, Butterbean's dream is in jeopardy. Two months ago, he lost a fight. One more loss could send him back to the factory. Tell me something about the fight that's coming up on uh, Sunday. What do you want to know about it? Just who it is, what you, you know, no, what you hope to do. I don't do. ever want to know who I'm fighting. You don't have to know who you're fighting. You just go out there and fight. What would you say is your ultimate dream? as far as uh, what you're doing? Well, my goal first, of course, as a parent, is to make sure that my life is stable. I, I do want to get a, my daughter in college. Is your daughter a big consideration in why you box? Oh, definitely, because I do want to uh, be able to support her and myself. I definitely want to be able to make the road a lot more easier for her, so that way she can absorb more of uh, focusing on her education versus trying to be a working single parent herself. fight. You could see that from the start of round one. This was a serious fight. Mm -hmm. uh, this was like two men in the, in the ring. In fact, the critics said afterwards it was like two men fighting. Because mm -hmm. we were both determined to prove physically that we can fight. And on top of that, we had a lot to prove to the sporting field that uh, this is a legitimate sport and, uh, and we're, that we're there to do our job. A good similarity is the riddick Bow holyfield fight. Uh, both one and two, where two warriors came out and showed a large amount of heart and skill. Yvonne Trevino and her manager Eric L. Sally realize that women's boxing will never bring in the big paydays the men demand. But if anyone questions whether women can compete, they always turn to the fight. On this night, 
a Volwood fight for the Women's Super Flyweight Championship. She would have to take the title from the beautiful Regina Helmick, the sweetheart of Germany, a young woman who doesn't seem to belong in a ring, whose delicate porcelain face has never been scratched. The fight will be remembered as an epic moment in boxing, women's or men's. And it would change Yvonne's life in ways she'd never imagine. You look like a different woman. Is that something you have worked on? Yes. I mean, unfortunately, I wasn't prepared at the time to do that because in the ring, I wanted to get in there and show it was down to business at the time. But it's changing the look and letting people know that uh, I'm a beautiful woman, and in the ring, it's, it's something different. I'm there to do my job. Yvonne Trevino was forced early on to make it on her own. At 19, she was married with a baby girl. At 20, she was a single mother, forced to compete in a man's world. Again, you know, the things turned for me, and, and I knew I was a, uh, gonna be a single parent now, and now I gotta go out and really support myself and my daughter. There was a dramatic change, but at the same time, I thought, you know, I'm determined all my life. I can do it, and I'll get out there and, and find something for me and, and still be able to support my daughter and I. Yvonne's been a city bus driver, a sanitation worker. She even drove a bulldozer. And then she discovered boxing. At first, to stay in shape, and then the self-defense. And then from there, when I found out we can compete, it was like stepping into a new scene. Uh, let me see where it can go, where it can take me. It took her to this night, this world championship fight. Tell me how the fight started off, Eric. Hey, she came out a little cold. Uh, she, she's noted for coming out cold, but uh, we, we worked on that, and you could see her, her skills. She was right. moving backwards, and uh, uh, Regina stepped in and caught her. Mm -hmm. And I'm yelling at her in the corner right now, saying, okay, okay, you know, you're okay. Go after her now and, and attack her. What was the, f the emotion there when you were down? I, I, it stunned me, and I was surprised. But at the same time, I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to make this up now, because now in the judge's eyes, she sure. just outpointed me. So I knew I had to come back with something. Larry Mosley Jr. threw his first punch at the age of 12. It was the first of 105 wins and only three losses in a career that has only just begun. At 16, he has a hard time finding opponents. He's that good. On this day, he spars at the LA Boxing Gym, facing a boxer years older and 20 pounds heavier. My dream is to be the champion of the Olympics, and, you know, and I dream about that every day, every night. Describe those dreams for me. Is there one dream, do you have a recurring dream of, of anything in particular to do with boxing? Just describe a, a little bit more detail about what you, what you see in those dreams. What I see in those dreams, I see me boxing very nice, you know, punish, I wouldn't say punish you, you know, very frazzly beating up the dude. And, and, and this is the fight to get the medal, you know, we both struggling, sweating, you know, fight just to get that medal. And I see myself just pulling over him a little bit and by more and more and more. And I, I just all of a sudden knock him down. He don't get back up. Olympics mean to you? What, what does it stand for? What does it mean in Larry Mosley's heart? It means big, big responsibility for me. A responsibility I can keep in my life to tell my kids or tell my grandsons that 
Well, I want an uh, Olympics. And they're like, really, Grandpa? Really? Yeah, I want an Olympics. Great team. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's good. That's good. Larry's father had to stop the session. How you feel? Okay, yeah. that's so good enough. Were we pleased about him that round? Oh. Huh? I was pleased that he, he's, he's floating his head, but the guy is big and he, he's holding it because he don't want to get hit. And Larry's much quicker. That's enough, Frank. Thank you. Now north to Alaska, where the wild frontier is about to get a little wilder. Get ready, Anchorage, Alaska. The original Tough Man Contest to choose the baddest man in Alaska at the Egan Center. Tickets available at all Cars, Dicks, and at the door. Ten seconds, only ten. He wobbled him over there. He's ready to go. Oh, he's gone. People don't care to see what I will call dancing and bobbing and weaving and things like that. They want to see a slugfest. They want to see characters. They want to see true tough guys. Call it what you want. Mike Tyson's a tough man. When he's in that ring, winging him away, he's fighting like a tough man. It's day one in the search for the toughest man in Alaska. This is the contest where any man can be king. Guts rule over style, strength over experience. $1,000 goes to the winner, $250 for second place. Every other fighter goes home with his memories. How about uh, you're in a restaurant, how about calling you hot dog? Yeah, that's a good name, man, hot dog. You'll be famous. 166, where's your everything? You're going to be a male. How about something interesting, Jerry? Art Daw started the Tough Man contest back in 1979. He discovered and now manages Butterbean. And he spends much of his time traveling America looking for new stars and giving them names. He said he'd wrestled a bear or killed a bear with his own bear hands. Yeah, 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 that's the bear slayer. <laughs> the bear slayer. That's did he call himself that or did no, you no. give it to him? No, he gave, well, he killed a bear with his bare hands. Rude dog. Yep. Ru you are the rude dog. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my nickname is Stonehead. Stonehead. Yeah. How did you lose your front teeth? I bit somebody Two. on the head. So what happens when you have to fight your brother? Well, let's hope it don't come to that. And if it does? I'm going to beat his ass. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Tonight's fighters are a mix of street people, members of a local boxing club, and ordinary Alaskans with their own reasons for putting up their dukes. Why do you want to do it? Why? Because I can use $1,000 right now. How would you spend the money? Pay my rent. They're calling me the Comet. The Comet? Yeah, the Comic. The Comic? All oh, right. Are you yeah, like, funny in the ring? Yeah, like it's a big joke. All oh, right. Do you think it's a big joke? No. You're going in there to win, eh? I'm going in there to see where I stand. Why do you want to be a tough man? I don't want to be a tough man. I just want to see where I stand or fall. Right. OK. I'm I think I get that. Like uh -huh. I just want to see, what, like I said, where I stand or fall. Does that prove something to yourself, then? No. Mm -hmm. Just gives me a better understanding about wrestling. Oh, really? How do you work that one out? How do I work what out? Whether you stand or fall gives you a better understanding of yourself. Well, like right now, I really don't know where I stand. They tell me the man to beat tonight is Fred Nickerson. His nickname is the Nightmare. But the Dreamer is more like it. So why did you get into fighting? To lose weight. It got really heavy. I was a really bad couch potato for a while. So I got up 300 pounds and I lost 30 pounds in a month. What were you interested in as a, as a kid? I was actually kind of a bookworm. What's your dream? I don't know. They keep changing. No one knows who they're going to fight or when you're going to fight. Uh, no biting or kicking this year. 
Good luck, everybody. Have some fun. You remember him. The comic won his fight against the hot dog. Then he walked away and never came back. He told the Anchorage newspaper he just wanted to see where he stood. It's time for Fred, the nightmare Nickerson, to face his first opponent, the Stonehead. I was six foot one and 300 pounds as a freshman in high school, and it was pretty bad. That's where my, most of my self-esteem problems come from, I think. Being in high school when you're re really overweight is no fun. Fred is one step closer to his latest dream, proving he's the toughest man in Alaska. How'd that feel? That was pretty good. Butterbean and his family are a long way from their home in Jasper, Alabama. When he moved to Bay City to train for his dream, his wife and three kids came along. It's the greatest thing that could happen to me is having kids. I mean, I'm sentimental, what can I say? <laughs> Where were you the day your first child was born? I was right there at the hospital. You know, I was in the delivery room with her. You know, I was right there when all, all three of them was born, I was right there. Tell me about that feeling, being a dad for the first time. Oh, it was time. great. I mean, something you really can't explain, you just have to, to witness it yourself. You know, to become, you know, when, when, they, when the doctor hands you the baby and you're the, you know, the second one other than him to hold it, it's just, it's wonderful. You know, it's, it's something that you couldn't describe. I mean, you're, you're, you're almost automatically crying because you have no choice. I mean, is that, is that touching? I mean, that's one thing that <laughs> nobody would want to get in between me and my kids, or my wife. That's hard, him being gone all the time. Is that a part of his life that you resent? In a way, because before we were together all the time. Now he'll... I know he was gone last time a week. This is another hard day for Libby. She's taking the kids back to Alabama for a while. Her childhood sweetheart is heading west to the bright lights of celebrity. To an appearance on The Tonight Show. And to a meeting with a stranger whose lucky punch could end the Butterbean dream. It was Yvonne Trevino's dream to use boxing to give her daughter the opportunities she never had. Then came this title fight against the world champion, Regina Halmig. Regina is the blonde beauty everyone is cheering for. Yvonne is on the canvas. I knew I had to come back with something. So and you beat her very quickly. Right, immediately I put her on the mat. <laughs> So then I felt 
up the scores even, but yet I can't stop now. I even have to progress and turn it up even more. Now, did that feel good <clears throat> when you got that first good punch in? Uh, it felt, yes, it, it did. It felt good. It felt a solid hit. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Bye. <laughs> One, two, three. Dig, dig, dig. Dig up. Even if it's not there, take it. Come on, everyone. Work it. Remember to bust, everyone. Remember to bust. Come on. Give me five. Time, uh, not, actually not too long ago, uh, about four months ago, uh, over the winter. Keep up, keep up, keep up. Where she um, called me from the bus in, in Arizona and, and says, do we have a fight coming up? And she was crying because she was riding the bike and she was cold and she didn't have a dollar to her name to even pay for the bus trip. And uh, she was pretty humbled and, uh, and uh, it was a good awakening. How you feel? How you feel? Sorry, I'm getting a good workout. Good. We were just good. talking about the bus there. No, <laughs> okay, I said to Eric, what does he mean by the bus? Uh, yeah. He just reminds me of how far I came. And the day we come a long way. And uh, I, had a, I had a lot of sacrifices to make to get where I'm at now. And he's reminding me not to forget about it because that's part of my motivating drive. Training hard right here, and uh, right at this point is where Yvonne uh, uh, went for her eye and opened up her eye. Uh, actually, put a mouse on her eye at this point. Uh, in the third round, she opens her up even more. And during that that uh, hit that I did, I actually cracked my hand. And I think from there, just continuing the fight at the time must have did more damage to it. But yet, I put that out, and I was focusing on the fight because I really wanted to. Right now, that's that was, that's just about to come up. Here okay, here goes short. Right there. That's where you broke it. The pain was tremendous the whole time, so I just thought, oh. That's when I went back to the corner, started telling Eric, you know, I think I hurt my hand. In a serious way, but I didn't want to say the actual words, so. <laughs> and I was worried that I, had, I already knew they were probably were going to stop it because they had stopped some of the other fights on minor problems. On the construction site, Fred Nickerson heads toward the finals in the Alaskan Tough Man contest. Is there a girl in your life right now? No, I have a confidence problem there too. I tend to, you know, go out with a girl for a couple weeks and decide that she's just doesn't want to hurt my feelings, and I end up finding a new one, that kind of thing. So you're pulling back all the time, aren't you? You're pulling back, frightened that you're going to get hurt. Well, I'm, I've been hurt a couple times. I'm not even going to describe how, but and I don't, I don't want to get hurt really bad again. And it, you know. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the third annual Alaska State Tough Man Championship. Hi. We're gonna have some fun tonight. Now it's Fred's second fight. If he loses, he's out of the contest. Fred Nickerson wins. He's made the finals. We've got one more to go. One more fight. Best of luck. Okay. Ding, all day, all day. All day until the round go ding, then I stop. Because you know, I'm going to my corner. Larry, how do you take best advantage of the ring? What do you do? 
Well, I like to give the opponent, you know, if I can see him with my reach, because, you know, I got a long reach. If I keep him right here, he try to move this way, I step this way, catch him with the left foot. Boom, 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 and keep, keep him in the corner so I can give him angles. Just step, you know, step, before he can't catch me, because he's going to try to throw punches to get out. Mm -hmm. You know what's changed about you since we've been in this ring? What? Your face. You know, you've got such a great smile most of the time. And yet your expression has changed completely since we've been in this ring. Really? You're no longer the nice guy. <laughs> Round four. Yvonne Trevino, challenger for the Women's Super Flyweight Championship of the World. She's impressing the crowd, but getting no respect from the champ. Regina gave you the come on sign at one point mm -hmm. this during. Is it. This is it here. It was a sloppy swing that I had thrown and missed, so I was embarrassed of the fact that I had missed. But on top of that, for her to sit there and, and taunt me like, oh, you know, like as if that's the best you've got. So then I was like, well, then come back here and I'll show you the best that I got. But it's opening up a lot more. It's starting to become a lot more bloodier. Now there's the concern of, I don't want the blood all over me. I'm sure she doesn't want to continue opening up the, the cut to be opened up anymore. So I knew they were going to start taking that matter seriously. There you are. <laughs> Do you ever worry that one punch could ruin your good looks forever? Of course, that's, that's always a concern on my mind. No woman would want a damaged face. That's become especially crucial for Yvonne. She and her manager have decided that big money will come not from boxing, but endorsements. And endorsements come from a sexy image. The Playboy spread. Mm -hmm. What do you think your little girl's reaction is going to be when she sees her mummy in Playboy? Mm -hmm. Well, I think so. Again, you know, she's got a good head on her shoulders. She's a very positive person. Uh, I think she'll understand that it's work, it's business. Uh, she's very proud of her mother. She knows that I'm very healthy and, and very athletic and, and that I pride myself on, on keeping myself looking good. And I think she'll look at it from that point of view, from that angle that, you know, and be proud of what my mom, you know, that's another one of my accomplishments that my mom made. Is it a means to an end? It's a stepping stone. How are you feeling at this point in round four? Were you still pretty comfortable? Right, I was, I was comfortable. I felt like I still had the fight because I was being the aggressor. Eric, were you throwing in some words from ringside at this point? Exactly right. I, I was throwing in words at her and, and just telling her, we're ahead, go for the eye because they're going to stop it. They're going to stop it. Stay on the eye. Stay on the eye. Yvonne Trevino is closing in on her boxing dream. Fred Nickerson has already won two fights in Alaska's Tough Man contest. His next fight will be for the championship. He'll face the winner of this bout, the Dancing Dish Boy, or Sir James. The dancing dish boy used to wash dishes. He works in the oil fields on Alaska's northern slope. We say I'm not the best out there, but it's a rush. I enjoy it, and uh, second place ain't nothing but the first place loser. Actually, Sir James is the dancer. He used to be a male stripper. 
You didn't tell me you were a former male stripper. I didn't know. Yeah, I've done quite a little bit of jiggling up here. But, uh, Is that what you call it? Dance and whatever you want to call it. I don't know. It was something to do. I just did it once to try it. You know. A little commercial out here on Channel 4. Ladies, at last, we've got our very own strip club. It's the Showboat 3. Do you feel a lot of, is at stake tonight? What's that? Do you yeah. feel that a lot is at stake tonight? Yeah, especially if I get hit. What did you make of it? I made I had fucked up, screwed up the first round, didn't take it. Yeah. So I guess I threw it away, but I definitely took the third round. I thought I might have had the second round. Are you angry? I'm angry at myself. I should have taken the first round. There wouldn't have been no damn, no damn bullshit about it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The, the judge scored it 29, 28? I don't know what the day and see what the judge scored. Mm-hmm. It was very close. It was very close. It was a good fight. Now, if Fred the Nightmare Nickerson can beat the former male stripper, he'll be crowned the toughest man in Alaska. Larry, wake up. Larry! Fight day for Larry Mosley Jr., Olympic hopeful. Hi, Larry. <laughs> what are you doing? Play yourself. Are you the egg, Mom? You want me to help you eat it too? Larry, mm -hmm. one strip of bacon, one sausage. You know you have to maintain your weight. Come back. They've called you what? The Great White Nope. It don't bug me. The Great White Nope? Yeah. But because some of the people haven't watched me fight, the, the people are what make it. The critics don't buy the tickets to go watch the fight. They get in free. So they can say whatever they want. It's fight night in a corner of Las Vegas. Four other bouts are on the card, including a championship. But the fans are here to see Butterbean. Am I welcome? In the boys' camp? Yeah? How are you doing, Butterbean? Good, yeah? Any butterflies? Butterflies. Butterflies. Oh, no, hang on, that just slipped up. And it's usually a little bit. Little shorts we get to wear. They are short shorts. They are short. Usually you're picked. Somebody will pick you. Somebody will see you. And I mean, there's no place where you go and you just get hired. And you're just like, I want to be a ring card girl. Here we are. We're ready to go now. No kidney punches back here. If you lose your mouthpiece, what? You took away all the punches. If you lose your mouthpiece, what are you going to do? Keep hitting him. Keep keep hitting him. If he loses his mouthpiece, I'm gonna keep hitting him. You can stay on top of him. All right. <laughs> what are you cackling about? I'm cackling at him. You must be Joe Wiggins. Yeah. How are you feeling? Do against him? We're gonna do pretty good. He's just across the way, behind the other curtain. He's giving it his all there, getting ready to meet you in the ring. How do you think you're gonna do against him? We're gonna do pretty good. You're gonna knock him out. He's gonna do what? You're gonna knock him out. You're gonna knock him out. Yeah, I'm gonna try. You're gonna try. Yeah. Do you feel a bit like a lamb to the slaughter? Gotta be in the scene. He's not gonna try. He's gonna knock him out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. He'd be better so when he's over. <laughs> Assume the position. Other one. Yeah. Never in my life felt anybody that feels cold when they sweat. Hey. Those 
hands up nice and high. Right here. Keep that head moving. Shoot everything in low. That's it. And relax. Joe? Hi. You trying to sleep or just... Uh, no, I'm just resting. You're just relaxing. resting. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what's floating through your mind down there? Just stand away, stick and move. Time has come. Our four competitors arrive at the moment of truth, each of them facing the dream. Yvonne Trevino fighting for her daughter's future. Butterbean fighting for the respect of the crowd. Fred Nickerson fighting for a place in life. And Larry Mosley fighting toward an Olympic dream. The right hand is catching them pretty good. When you throw that lazy jab, when you're leaning, you throw that lazy jab, come over with that right hand. Bam, it's catching them. You can catch, you're going to keep catching them with it. All right? Rush him, rush him. Just keep rushing him. He'll fold on you Don't if you rush him. Don't wait on him. Wait on him. Well, right now, they just got done telling us that's it. They're stopping the fight. She's defeated.
You're the last one here. Yeah, everybody else got changed already. Oh. Whew. How's your confidence? Oh, it's okay. I didn't fight very well that time. I didn't throw enough punches. And I got frustrated when he grabbed me and wouldn't let go of me. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Your confidence well, hasn't taken too much of a knock, has it? No, I knew he was a lot better fighter than me when I started. Right. I was hoping that my size would give me an advantage, but he didn't let me hit him. <laughs> right. I don't think I landed any good punches at all. Oh, from where I was sitting, you looked like you did. Well, he got you on the face a few times. Yeah, he didn't really hurt me at all, but just uh, he kept he kept holding me when I thought I was going to nail him, uh -huh. and you know I didn't know what to do. I got to work on that. I guess yeah. I've not enough experience. Uh huh. But you know, we were talking earlier about belief in yourself and everything else. This isn't going to set you back, is it, Fred? Oh no. And uh, as you raise your hands, you also said some words into the camera. Look, here they come now. Um, just as the gloves are taken off, you raise your hands. Now, what did you say there? I said, uh, baby, this is for you at home. This is for Delfina Baldenegro for you at home. So I was letting my daughter know that uh, I've gotten here because I had the, the heart and the effort to do it, and I'm doing it for you. But it was a lot of emotion, you know, goes through your mind at the time. And that was just one main thing that I remember. This is for you, Miha. I'm bringing home this beautiful belt. Butterbean, you gonna, hi. Are you gonna phone the uh, the wife and family, or is it uh, the I'll time difference? I'll phone them later. Yeah. Phone them. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot believe it's not Butterbean. Can't believe it's not Butterbean. How did that man know a camera was rolling? <laughs> Good people. What yeah. can I say? What would you like um, Butterbean's legacy to be? How would you like people to remember you? I'm just a regular person. You know, that's all I want people to know. I just do a different job than most people. Would you like to be thought of as a role model? Would that, would that well, make you happy? Not, not really. I mean, some of them, you know, I feel the role, people's role models ought to be their parents. I think kids ought to be kept straight. You know, that's, that's the future of America is our kids. Do you see in your mind's eye Larry Mosley standing up there on the podium with that gold medal around yes, his neck? Yes, with the U.S. flag, yeah. color trunks on. Yes, I do, all the time. So. And what's that feeling when Larry Mosley has that uh, American flag in his hand and he's won? Feels great. Feels, feels like I'm champion.